Endicott, New York. It's a small community nestled in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. It's home of the Union Endicott Tigers and fits the stereotype of what you'd expect to find in small town America. But hidden beneath those old abandoned buildings sits a rich history of flight that oftentimes people my age may forget. So how do you inspire the next generation of STEM professionals and aviators? Let me show you. A local 17-year-old private pilot is preparing to fly a plane across the eastern half of the country this spring in support of our veterans. Welcome back to the cockpit. Welcome back to the cockpit. Welcome back. On course 16, group takeoff when you want to tell them. I had the opportunity to speak with UVHS student Luke Palipsu to learn more about his charity flight, Loop for the Troops, and how he's accomplishing big things at a young age. Hi, my name is Luke Palipsu. I'm a pilot, YouTuber, and entrepreneur. At 15, I took my first flight in an airplane, soloed for the first time on my 16th birthday, and then a year later, became a private pilot on my 17th birthday. Hello, my name is Tom Palazzo. I've been a technology education teacher here at Union Endicott High School for 21 years. I've been a volunteer firefighter at Endwell for the past 21. My name is Mike Wachowski. I'm a technology and engineering teacher here at Union Endicott High School. 2023, I was accepted into the New York State Master Teacher Program, as well as selected as the Region 43 Teacher of the Year. This story really begins with a vision. A vision to inspire other kids and give back to a community that's given so much to me. Ever since I found my passion for flying, I've made it my mission to spread that love to as many other people as possible and use it as a tool to make the world a better place. When Luke was in my class in 2020, he uh, kept eyeing the door in the back of my room that was marked flight deck door authorized personnel only. He asked me what was that about, and I, I said I had a tech club that a few years back started uh, a flight simulator project, and it was nothing but a, a single projector on the wall with a couple flight controls and a plywood screen that we made that kind of wrapped around where you'd sit at a desk. A flight simulator, that was it. This was the way that I was going to inspire other kids in my school to learn how to fly. So he offered to clean my closet. He threw out tons of junk and old, old stored materials and started building a flight simulator. I think when I first brought this idea up, people were probably pretty skeptical on if this really would become a reality. Being the second time that we attempted this project, I was pretty skeptical that a single student could do this project. I didn't want it to just be the same thing over again. Luke assured me that he would make it a flight simulator like nothing I had ever seen before, and it would be a fully immersive flight simulator. So he seemed pretty motivated, so I gave him a shot. Once the vision was set and we were given the go ahead to turn this old empty closet into a full immersion flight simulator, we were off to the races. The UE Tech Club raised over $7,000 in monetary donations in the following months, and also another $8,000 in company sponsorships. In addition to all of that, we got donated a full frame of an old Piper Cherokee that was since retired. More to come on that later. The first step that we took to making this room a friendly space for a flight simulator was to make it an actual room and not a closet. We carpeted the whole thing and painted the walls and ceiling black to eliminate any glare that the projectors would make for a 180 degree screen. We built this in four different sections and placed them in the room individually and then assembled them once they were all in place. So Luke approached me um, about making this 180 degree screen um, and him kind of knowing that my specialty and kind of my passion is woodworking. We wanted to make sure that we could model this thing, uh, again, in our 3D modeling software. 
I'll make sure it was actually going to be feasible. This is nothing I had ever had tried to build in the past or ever tried or ever been asked to make. Uh, so it was, it was a learning experience for all of us. This happened all during COVID. While the world shut down, lumber prices skyrocketed severely. Uh, even the availability of some, some of the materials was hard to get. Once the screen was built, we realized that MDF really didn't look too good on projectors. For that reason, we primed it and sanded it multiple times to get rid of all the blemishes that were in the material. After that, we painted the screen with a 4K paint that makes it the ideal surface for a projector picture. This allows us to run the screen at 4K for videos, and we normally run the simulator software at 1080p, which runs absolutely amazing. The alternative was buying a $10,000 screen, which was feasibly not really where we wanted to be, uh, and we were able to complete the project for about $500. Once the screen was complete, we moved on to another one of the daunting tasks of this project and built a custom projector mount to hold two projectors from the ceiling so that they wouldn't move and that they'd hold in place perfectly 24-7, 365. In order to do this, we fabricated a custom metal frame in our metal shop that fit perfectly for the dimensions of the room, which is a little funky and isn't a perfect rectangle. This is something that we didn't figure out until this point. Take me where your river flows. I wanna drive on your open road like the wilderness where we are born singing whoa. Once the projectors were up, we connected it to a temporary computer in the room that would eventually turn into the main flight simulator computer. We run a program that's called Fly Elise Immersive Display Pro. This allows us to take two messed up unwarped projector images and make it so it fits perfectly on our curved screen. Of course, this is required because it isn't a perfect flat rectangle and this was another difficult task. We spent weeks on weeks trying to figure out the best way to do this, and we ended up figuring it out and it looked great. Once the projectors were warped, we called it a year and wrapped things up for the 2022 school year. This was now year two of the project and we were anxious to get it done. Unfortunately, due to asbestos removal in our building, we were unable to come into work all of July and August, so we had to push it back and only wait for September when we came back to school. This was now my senior year of high school, which was going to be filled along with all of the crew that was working on this project. So when you add those three schedules together, it made it really difficult to get a lot done quickly. When we came back in September, we got started right away and we first started with our airplane that was sitting out behind the school. This was a 1984 Piper Cherokee that had previously crashed nobody got hurt, and that was donated to the UE Tech Club for this project. It was a way for the flight school that donated it, which is 747 Aviation in Cortland, New York, to fly again. We started by chopping the airplane in half. Once we had the shape we wanted, we had to gut the entire thing because unfortunately the things that were made in the 80s aren't really up to our standard in 2023. After the cockpit was formed and we had the piece that we were gonna put in the room, we then realized that we had to chop that in half yet again because it wouldn't fit through the door. And unfortunately, we couldn't cut through the concrete wall into the sim room. Once we did that, we cut through it horizontally and brought the cockpit in in two pieces. We reassembled it in the room and got to work on a custom panel, custom interior, and installing all of the avionics and electronics into the cockpit. After another couple months of all of that happening, we finally had what looked like an airplane. The only thing we had to do now was to get all of the computer set up with all of the new electronics that we had installed, including the Garmin G1000 from Real Sim Gear and all of the flight controls from Honeycomb Aeronautics. This became a really cool part of the project because it finally started to come together. We fired up X-Plane 11 for the first time, and after figuring out a few minor glitches, we got it to work perfectly, and we took our first flight.
that the simulator is complete and fully functional, we are on to the next step, which is implementing curriculum so that this tool can be used on a daily basis by students in our school. We are giving each student their own flight controls at their computer and they have to log a mission every class period. Once they grow out of that, they can then use the flight simulator that Luke has made. We hope that we can inspire generations of students to come to go out and pursue a career in aviation or another STEM field. We all have those experiences early in life that kind of guide you, um, you know, whether it's a passion, seeing somebody else's passion for something, and mine was definitely my grandparents, my grandfathers. I got into technology in this very room when I was in class here in 1993. We can't wait to see all of the additions and things that get added onto this project in the years to come. And I definitely am excited to see all of the kids that get to fly this in the future. I've had students become machinists, students become engineers, now students becoming pilots, uh, to the point of where I actually had Luke bring me up in his airplane. And that was a rewarding experience. For all of you in this room that are watching this video, you are probably a part of this project in one way or another. Whether you were a donor on GoFundMe or somebody that donated an equipment or just gave us your moral support, we appreciate all of that because without it, this wouldn't have been possible. Thank you for supporting the UE Technology Club, UE Tech Department, STEM departments, and everything that we do here at the high school. We appreciate your continued support because without it, none of this would be possible.